Be heard dot live. 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 And I don't know why the attorneys can't take that as being uh, uh, evidence on her part that maybe she maybe she made a mistake, but she was doing what she believed to be within her rights as a landlord. And what do you think? So you guys went to the dump a few times. What do you think the value of the stuff? I would is? say I, I would I wouldn't even give any value to it. No value. Well, it would be uh, certainly. I, I, and if, but if the value is a function of the in the eye, uh, eye of the beholder, and he alleged that there was a there was some sort of a, uh, a, a cow head, you know, skull kind of thing, you know, and that it had some in, significance to you know Indian hi, hi, historical significance. No, it was a broken. I think one of the horns was missing. It was I've seen and have had uh, you know those kinds of, of structures. My son has two or three of them. He lives over in Idaho. I know what a good-looking skull cow head looks like, or deer head. Or so he had a paper mache yeah. head, and he's saying this is a ancient yeah, Indian some artifact. Sort of artifact. Well, the right. crazy thing about that is um, twofold. One, any ancient Indian artifact is to be turned over to whatever tribe that it's found in. Whatever, wherever you find it, you have to contact the local tribe and present them with this <laughs> artifact. <laughs> the second thing is, uh, if you have an artifact like that. It would be documented, so he should be able to show me a picture, and that this is an archived or an ancient artifact, and it has some kind of value or right. something like that. The same way, same thing about this uh, uh, alleged Native or Indian Native American shield that he had, like a war shield, right? That and and it, if I recall, there was it's a kind of a structure, circular, uh, bendable wood, you know, wood that, that you could, you know, like willow, you know, and then strings that held this torn, I, I, it might have been an animal skin of some sort, but I mean, it was fragmented. It was, I mean, I, it, there was nothing about it except to call it just a piece of junk. Uh, there was certainly nothing meaningful to anybody except to him. I think this guy had some real issues about making up stories to satisfy his own uh, agenda. You know, I, you know, uh, I, and, and next he says something like this, that the, the kids ate with their hands, at, at least at some time, because that's what that's what you do in the woods, and that's what natives do, you know. And so he's pretending to be a Native American, or he's is steeped in their culture, whatever he his agenda is. So he can make up any story he wants about a gun that might be used to protect himself against the whomever, right, or a shield. It, it, it sounds to me like a five-year-old who plays with things and then calls some things that he kind of wishes were true. That's kind of the way I see this guy, you know. Uh, and there's no other reason for, you know, and then he's finally, he says, hey, I've got, I've got a case here uh, where I can finally start making some money off of this, this lawsuit. And then so he said, so well, well, you might as well claim everything you can and raise the ante as much as you can. And, you know, if she doesn't pay, she goes to jail and, She's obviously got some means, you know, you know, she's not impoverished in any way, and uh, they're taking, taking advantage of it. I, I, I think it's a pretty cut, cut case. But why the attorneys are so willing to believe this ne'er-do-well, this, this, this guy who hasn't, I, I, from what I, I, I hear, hasn't had a job that he's maintained for any length of time, he keeps changing jobs, he keeps changing where he lives, he doesn't take care of his kids. He neglects the kids. Why he is the the uh, epitome of, of a father and of a trustworthy person is beyond me. And when you compare it to somebody like Nancy, I mean, you know, it makes no sense that they would not believe her but believe him. It's to me what makes sense is they haven't met her or talked to her. And I also believe that but all the attorney. Uh, so so her attorney is coming at her. So imagine you are innocent. 
and your attorney's trying to get you to confess you're guilty. Now you're irritated, and you're not saying everything that you want, and he's getting more irritated at you trying to make this narrative, and right. you're fighting against it because it's not the truth. Right. It, it must be really frustrating for her. But I, so my understanding, I'm not sure about all the attorneys, so I want to find more about that. Um, I, my understanding is uh, she had two or three attorneys. Like one died. She yeah. said one had some uh, a mental breakdown or something like something that, possibly. Like that, yeah. And this third one is trying to get her to side on the side of you did it but let's just try to get the char charges right. lowered down so he's just trying to push the paperwork he's he doesn't want to fight this he's like ah you know what he, and, and, and this is just my assumption i don't know this to be fact but it looks to me more like this is just look i'm just going to slide you down they're not going to send you to jail for this he's not going to throw an old lady in jail for this they're going to charge you for it but they're going to defer your sentencing crap like that they'll tell you that stuff all the time so but so what I'm seeing is I'm seeing an old lady that they're trying. And if have you read the the documents that she got? Yeah. No. Oh my God. If you read them, you wouldn't know who the hell they're talking about. Either side, him or her. It makes her sound like she is vindictive and she was just sneaking down yeah, there all yeah, the time. I guess, and I, guess I did stuff. see something. I didn't go. And, I didn't go with. Yeah. I think I read a first paragraph or something. I thought this this was really not very accurate. Whoever wrote this. Has got a totally biased opinion about who she is. Totally, right. completely. What he's, I believe, what the district attorney over there is doing is he's looking at this case, thinking I've got an old white woman making accusations against these guys. I have a Native American. Oh, that's nice. I could, I could save a Native American. Right. And there he goes. And he's, and but unfortunately, he's not doing his job. And here's what's unfortunate about what he's not doing, because like I said. My interest is in one, if that guy's molesting his daughter, I want it stopped. I want to save her. And two, she's not going to jail if I can do anything about it. Well, These two I things think, aren't going to happen. I think going into the molesting of the daughter is going to be a very difficult thing to prove. Sure it is. Right. Wait until I go. Right. And it, it, it's going to be interesting. And, and, and Nancy has no firsthand knowledge of that. Yeah. You know, she, from what I understand, that I, I let's see, it goes something like this that, uh, she tried to get pajamas or something, buy pajamas for the kids or for, for, for him, whatever that story is. And then the girl said, no, daddy sleeps with me, but he doesn't wear, he doesn't wear any clothes. Somehow it was revealed to her that they sleep together and he is naked when he goes to bed. Yeah. That's the story I heard. Okay. That's the one I and heard. Now what, now what Nancy's thinking is, is obviously, I mean, this, you don't have to be, you know, uh, psychiatrist figure this out, that this guy is a pervert and he's taking advantage of his daughter, which could very well be the case. I wouldn't put a past him at all, yep. right? But in a court of law, yeah, they're going to say something like, I mean, if that's going to be a, the part of the case, uh, then she's got to have more than a hearsay from, exactly. a, from a child. Yep, you right? need to go to ex-wives, ex-girlfriends, yeah, find out if there's anything there, right. he's if he's got any convictions or anything like that. Anybody else making these accusations? New, that's a whole new can of worms. It is. We're talking about it's, a tenant... It's, uh, 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 landowner tenant relationship here not a child molesting case yeah and and so and that that that's what i said i said you know what the child molestation as i dig through this i'm going to try to question people and find out if i can find out anything going on there um i find it very curious that she contacted cps they did nothing she contacted the school they did nothing i mean when you ring a bell you expect to have somebody answer at least say um let's go find out if there's any smoke with this because it is an 11 year old little girl but like I said, that that's kind of to the side, but it's so odd to me. See, for him, I could see him filing a civil suit against her. Hey, you destroyed my Indian artifacts. Yeah, you did this, yeah. that. I'm gonna civilly sue you for a financial thing. And I, 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 I almost, I don't think I'm not gonna, I'm not going to uh, comment on the guy's intelligence, but I'm just saying I don't think he intended for this to happen. I don't think his intent was to. Uh, Maybe it was to have her arrested for the guns. I think it morphed into that. Yeah, I think you're right. I think when some, I think when the police and these other guys started saying guns, so and then they started building this case, and the prosecuting attorney got a hold of it, and he's like, "Ooh, gun charges! Ooh, white woman got him!" Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, yeah, they ratcheted it up. They yeah, they ratcheted good. it up, and so, and it, it, would, it yeah. seems to me like the obvious thing that would have happened. I mean, I'm, and I'm, obviously I'm wrong. Is this guy would make, would make a claim that somehow she threw a bunch of what he considered as valuable stuff away? Okay, what's the what is the price tag you put on that stuff, right? 
And it, who knows, but the guy could have said something like, uh, there was at least uh, $5,000 worth of stuff, which is the biggest lie I've ever heard, right? I get 200 maybe. I don't even would blink that. In other words, that's how bad it was. I mean, it was just a jump, right? But he could claim 5000 She could write a check for 5000 and say, okay, you're out of here. Done. And he would have been so happy to get five grand. He's never had five grand at one time in his life, right? Yeah. But now, all of a sudden, the prosecutors get it, and they say, no, no, this is worth a lot more than that. We got big time stuff here. Yeah. Right? And you can just keep making it up until you get there. Yeah. You know, prove what your own conclusions are. Yeah. You know, and find the evidence in support of that and ignore anything else that's contra contradiction to that. So I think you're you're right in that the, she's being railroaded, as they say. Yeah. You know? I think so, too. I think that she is. And I think that they're trying to get a feather in their hat for some gun charge because this is this. And with, with her with her first attorney dying, because she says her first attorney was going to say that there was no, uh, you know, uh, then Miranda rights were never read. And I said, that was your first attorney's thing? Yeah, but the second attorney didn't seem interested in it. And I'm like, well, that, that sounds so weird. And okay, but the second attorney had dementia and these things, she was telling me what happened and stuff. And I'm like, okay, he wasn't confident. But this third attorney, so why is he not jumping on it? Because that was the first thing that I jumped on. And, and I told her, I said, wait a second. I said, don't fire your attorney. You know, I said, first, don't fire him. Let's, let's figure out what's going on right now. Let him get this extension. So they went and got an extension yesterday. And I said, but before you get that extension, just say, Your Honor, I'd like to say one thing. I was never read my Miranda rights. And she said, okay. And she said that they said, go get the video from the okay, police station. So, so how can she prove that she was never read the Miranda rights? How can, how does she, other, other than just claim that she never... Well, they always wore body cams. Okay. So, so my first she, thing would say... The you, first, the, 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 you, what you're assuming is the cop who came to her... A place that was early in the morning, from what I understand. Yeah. The first thing he should have said is, uh, you know, you have a right to be, you know. You have a right to remain silent. Everything you say, Canada will be used you, against you, you in a court of law. Attorney, we'll get one for you. Exactly. Right? I mean, I, you know, that's the first thing he did. The minute he started asking her questions about uh, and putting together a case, he went there with the intent of of, of arresting her for this crime. He was going to charge her for this crime. The minute he had a crime to charge her with, if he was going to charge her for the crime and take her down and book her, he should have read her Miranda. Why does it seem so hard then to get the cops' recording of asking her for the Miranda? Yeah. Uh, uh, why, why isn't that available? Isn't that available and through the course? Somehow? It is. It is. It's just so weird. It, this, is, this have, is the thing. Why have not, three attorneys not asked for that? Man, there's something wrong with that. Just That's what I want to find out. That's where I'm going to go. I'm going to go once I get this information and I get her. I'm going to I'm going to take a photocopy of this court case against it. Then I'm going to go line by line and dissect it. I'm going to get all the players listed on a sheet, and then I'm going to question each one of those players. And I'm just going to find out what is going on. Honestly, and this is why I'm doing it because I truly believe as I start digging through this and asking people questions, people are going to go, "Who is this guy?" And they're going to start looking at me. And, they, and, and then they're going to go, this guy's asking a lot of questions. And he's putting it on this website, uh, unfiltered with the Be Heard Network. And the truth is coming out. <laughs> and I'm just like, and my question to the prosecuting attorney is, if I'm right, you're in, you're in trouble. If you're right, there's not a problem here. But if I am right, and this woman is innocent, and you convict her of this crime, <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. And I'm just like, okay, guys, help. Let's get this out there. Let's get this stuff noticed. All right, well, then uh, what else? What's the, what's the next move? Um, well, I got your story, and I think the next move is to get the actual court case and go through all of those, and then I'm going to contact the police department and ask for all of the public uh, stuff that, that I can get on it. And uh, What about this, uh, this claim, not claim, what she, what she stated here the other day about he hasn't paid for January's rent? See, here's, okay, and you just did something right here that you didn't know. When you said it was unvalued at about $200. Uh, yeah. Okay, but you know what that means? Here's the, here's the difference in the law. If it's valued under $250, she has to give seven days notice before taking it to the dump. 
So if she did stick a thing on the window because she didn't have his contact information, so she put a public notice on the window. I saw that. She put a public notice on the window. If that was there for more than seven days and the value of the stuff you took to the dump was under $250, she's in within her legal rights. Now, if it was if it was valued over $750, So what then, about the difference between 250 and 750 See, that I didn't, it doesn't really, the, the paperwork didn't say, so I just... I don't have an answer for that. I have one RCW that says under $250. I have another RCW that says over $750. Okay. And, and the difference is, one, she has to give seven days notice. The other one, she has to give 45 days notice. Okay. And, and then, um, but then the other thing comes down to, and she has said that he said he was going to go try out this apartment, <coughs> which is weird. It's confusing. See, that's where it comes down to this. You know, and, and he said, um, I'm going to try out this other apartment. I'll be back for next month. Well, then he, it would have been like, okay, she had a clear understanding. He intended to come back. But I'm going to go try out this other apartment, grabbing your stuff, moving out, and leaving. That means me to believe that you're, you're moving out. And the fact that he paid for um, October or November and December and a deposit. That deposit does not extend over to rent. That deposit is left for damages, yeah. and as you can contest, right. there was damages. Right. You know, they left stuff all over. They oh, had yeah. to have a cleaning no, crew no. in. I mean, on and on and on. Just a cleaning bill. Yeah. Uh, just to, if she if she had hired somebody to clean it. Yeah. And I can't remember. I've, I've helped on a couple of people that have moved out, and whether it was that case or not, I, I think it was. But I mean, we had to go in and, and patch some of the, the wall, walls and repaint them and. I mean, and just, just to, just to clean up the place to de to make it more sanitary, uh, you know, would have been, uh, uh, yeah. And I, I believe there was some broken curtains or something, broken curtain rods or something. I mean, it, it, it just looked like it's a, a storm had hit the entire inside of that place. Oh, I couldn't even believe anybody would live there, let alone the kids. Yeah. Anyway, the point is that there's that. So let's just say that he had not actually paid for January, and it was in January where this whole thing went down, and he made his claim. If you're not a renter, if you're not in good faith, or you know that you haven't paid your way for the, the rent for that, then do, can you make a claim if you're not, in fact, a renter? I don't know. Well, here's another side, here's another caveat to that whole thing. So she says that he, he ran the apartment. She, she misunderstands what she's saying, because what she said was, well, he was paid through January. And then I said, was he paid through January? He says, well, he paid for November and December and then had a deposit. And I said, so you were working into the deposit for January? She says, yes. I said, so then January wasn't paid for because a deposit is not in lieu of rent. It's right. not for rent. It is for deposit and damages done. And then she said, well, here's the original agreement. I had a bunch of work that needed to be done. He was going to come in and do the work. And I was going to work off something with him to do the work. And so he only paid $1,500 and the deposit. The first month's work was supposed to be trade, but he started cutting the metal wrong and doing it wrong. And she said, oh, forget it and let it slide. And I'm like, okay, there's a big difference between giving it to him and letting it slide. You never said, I'm going to pay you for the work you didn't do. You had to hire another company and it was uh, his biz that came in and actually did the work. So I was gonna go talk to his biz and get the receipts for that because he was supposed to come in and do this work in lieu of rent. He never did the work. She had to hire a third party company. Therefore, there was no exchange for in lieu of rent, which means the only rent that he had paid technically would have been for November, which means December did not get paid. And then in actuality, he ate up that deposit in December. So January, there was no expectation of him staying there. Now, the whole thing is she didn't understand this. But this is the truth. This is the fact. The bottom line is he came in. The agreement was, whether it was verbal or written, was he was going to come in and do work for her in lieu of rent, paid her $1,500, gave her partial of the down payment or damage deposit. And, and so technically... 
He never paid for anything. He never did the work. He never completed what he had contractually committed to doing. So, and I don't understand why the lawyers aren't talking about that. I mean, why am I some dipshit from, you know, Camino Island asking questions that these guys should have well, asked? I, yeah, I have to admit, I've, I've heard more good uh, uh, lawyerese from you than I had from any of these other lawyers. I, I just, I just don't it's, get it. It's just, no, I don't get it either. Uh, uh, I, and I, and I, I think that she, this, this current lawyer, is a, uh, a, a what criminal attorney. Okay, All right. there, you know when you start out with that as your focus, somebody's a criminal. That's why you're getting paid. Yeah. Right? I got to find out who's wrong here. I know that there's a criminal involved, right? That's an assumption on the part of the attorney that there's wrongdoing, and I got to find out. You know, now, so then you make your mind up. Well, obviously, you know, she's the criminal. Right? But what happens if you have a uh, a landlord tenant lawyer that understands those rules, you know, and you go and because there's all kinds of uh, yeah. uh, uh, legal uh, disagreements between uh, you know tenants and, and landlords that goes on all the time. Yep, know? that's a that's a full time business. Right? Exactly. I mean, everybody's running everything, right? Oh yeah. And uh, so I mean, so if you go to somebody who really knows the inside of that law, which you, you've done a great job explaining, then then this would have been just kind of easy, you know? That's what I'm saying. I'm looking at this going, what is going on here? Because you do have a tenant dispute yeah. on one hand, yeah. and then you've got all of a sudden some gun charges. Right. Okay, where are the guns? Right. Show me a picture. And here's the bottom line. Yeah. This guy could easily, like, for instance, I have a lot of guns. I love guns. You come to me and you say, I, I and I say, you stole my guns, and they say, Oh, can you prove it? I'd say, yes, I do. Here's the receipt for this gun. Here's pictures of the guns. Here's the, here's the ID for the gun. Here's the registration from the gun. I'm the legal owner for the gun. As you can see, I do not have the gun on my premises. This is the only person that came into my premises. I have a gun. Okay, there we go. So where's the pictures? Where's your, where's your gun registration? Where did you buy it from? Where's your receipts from? You should be, where did you get the gun, David? Well, I got it from, I got it from Cabela's. I got it from Skagit Arms. I got it from this place. They go there. Did David Down buy a gun for him? Absolutely. Here's the paperwork we're legally required to right. fill out for this man to own that gun. Right. So then why hasn't an attorney challenged the whole gun concept? And then she and says he's a felon. He's supposed to be a felon yeah. that has gun charges against uh, him. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a background check on him and run it. If he's got gun charges, wait a second. Did a criminal just confess to a police officer that he illegally had guns in his possession and stowed them? Not in a safe with children in the air. They, you know how many laws are against that? I'll tell you how many laws. There's four because I'm looking them up and I'm writing them down on this thing saying, here's what the gun laws are in Washington State to own a gun, to stow a gun. I, it's, 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 it's insanity that this, and that this is happening. And the thing is, is it looks like it's, it's like we just want to nail you for these charges and we're going to work it out and we're going to let you off with a slap on the hand, but you're going to have this felony conviction. And it's like, no, no, she's not going to have this felony conviction. I'm not going to let that happen to her. I don't believe she stole the guns. All right, so from here on, from, from what I understand, she, he, uh, Robert, the attorney, uh, on her request, not her request, but has recommended to her that she meets with a psychologist, a forensic psychologist on the 18th of December, and that he somehow dredges up her past and that somehow that might be contributing uh, to why she committed this what, crime. Whatever the issues that she might have had with the, the uh, tenant, all right? Uh, f first of all, I, I, I think that's really out of the, bo uh, out of the bounds of, of, uh, of, of being a lawyer. And when it, I understand that if you have, a, you have a real criminal case, let's say that you're Ted Bundy, and you've got to find out why Ted Bundy killed all these people. I can both see a forensic psychologist at $2,000, right? But in this case, I think that's really a reach, you know? And, and, and well, he's trying to get an, yeah. an outside con, 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 consultant to do uh, you know, dredge up her past. Right? Uh, it, it just seems to be beyond what would be reasonable. Right? Now, the only saving grace, I told her this, is that if he, if he, the attorney, believes that you really have already admitted to being guilty and that you really are going to prison and it's going to cost you everything that you own, Okay, that's it. The only thing I can get you off on is not 
not guilty by reason of insanity, but at least that there are childhood issues that it might have predisposed you and that might have biased your relationship. And, and they're, they're, they're reaching into the, you know, that in desperation into a bag that they can take, go to an attorney and mitigate or, you know, the, the charges, either the, uh, the time she spends, any time at all, because after all, she had this horrible past. I think it's a real reach. Right. Yeah. That's, that's really fishing, or it's something you're just not going to get. But that's the only motivation I can see that he would go and get a forensic psychologist to try to work this through. But incidentally, what's a, what's a forensic psychologist going to be looking for? Any evidence at all that relates to the two, right? He'll find what he's looking for. Yeah. If I went into your past, I'd find something that would, you know, somehow could be attributed to oh, whatever, yeah. whatever you are doing now. Yeah? Yeah. Why do you have so many guns? Do you feel paranoid? Mm -hmm. Were you abused as a child? I mean, there are so many questions on that on are on. leading questions, right? Yeah. And, she, and, and he, the, 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 the uh, uh, psychologist, can literally find what he's looking for, whatever it is, whatever agenda he has, yeah. right? Because he's going to write it up and say, now, here, here's the uh, deal. Is he going to write up a report at $2,000? You better have some, some something that comes out of this, right? Uh, that goes on record, goes to the attorney, or goes to whoever, and it says, Gee, I uh, have spent uh, five or six hours uh, with Mrs. Griffin, and I found that she's an absolutely uh, uh, well-adjusted, perfectly uh, fine lady, and I see no relationship between her past and, and what the, the crime that she alleged. You know, I don't think that's going to happen. Well, He's, wait till the who, when? When's the attorney going to send the next client to that guy? I mean, this guy's got to find something. He's got, He's got to get paid for it. Pay. He's got to get paid. Yeah, right? yeah. And you and you know that, they, and he knows. The, the psychologist knows. Hey, if I'm going to have this guy again, I got to show him some evidence. You know? Yeah, yep. And I got news for you. I know. I know. I know very little about her past. I do know that she had a very difficult past. I know yep. what. I mean, you're, you're Which going, is irrelevant. Yeah, but that's just it. I, that's what. Uh, and there's two different cases. There is the gun case. And there's the landlord case, and they need to be split. You've got gun criminal charges. You're trying to say this woman right. broke into this guy's apartment, stole these guns, sold them to the Camino Island gun black market or whatever, and these guns have just disappeared. And that's what they're saying. And so my first question is, prove that there was even guns. I don't believe they even existed. So prove to me there's guns. That's my first question. Why isn't the lawyer's first question? Prove me the guns. The lawyer should be saying, these are the guns that you stole. This is how long he's had them. Here's where he bought them from. We have a direct history of this man owning these guns. All three of them. She's been charged with three fictitious crimes. There, there's no guns. You didn't see any guns. She didn't see any guns. This is a woman that didn't even know what a gun was when she describes it. She's like, it had a clicker thing. There was no clicker on the top. There was no clicker on the bottom. Yeah, it was just what? Yeah. And I'm like... Okay, this is not a big time gun person, you know. I mean, this isn't, and 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 she doesn't, and it's just like. And it, the, the other the other thing that uh, uh, this is the attorney I guess says, uh, uh, and I can't remember the exact words, but it was something like, uh, "Would you describe Nancy as a hostile, aggressive uh, woman that would harm somebody?" And I said, "That is the opposite of who she is. She's the kindest, sweetest." loving and caring person you, you could ever meet which is the truth right and that's why i'm here yeah. because the lady that i missed the appointment from could you imagine i told you i was going to meet you at qfc well, I, and i, I didn't show up for two you. hours i would have had some words with you <laughs> exactly <laughs> so <laughs> it would have been missing like, you like, son of a gun <laughs> but, I, but I, I i did i did make the comment i said however if she feels as though you have cheated her or that you have wronged her in some way and she's had a history of people that have not done her well and it might be repairmen or, or or whatever you know then she'll fight for her rights she'll stand up for herself that's not an issue but to say that she is inherently uh, dangerous or uh, can be aggressive he the plaintiff has accused uh, Nancy of somehow harming his daughter of grabbing her by the face and squeezing her face not true. Could would never happen. You know that is something she would not do. Physically attack anybody for any reason, right? But somehow this guy made that claim. Now and I have no idea, you know, where he came from for that because that, that just simply would not. Would, it was not a part of her of her being that she would be physical, particularly with a child. I mean, she was looking out for the child's best interests. 
in terms of food and clothing and bedding, all that. So then how does that fit? You know, you listen to you listen to her testimony and when she talks about that little girl, her face lights up, she's glowing about yeah. it, she's so about the kittens that's the, and that's the point. Yeah. That somebody has to say, okay, there's a there's a real gap in here between what's being claimed and, and who she is. Yeah. And you know, it, it, I don't, I, I don't, I'm getting, I get frustrated when I think about how much crap she's had to put up with now for just about two years. Yeah. Well, this guy's gonna have to do a lot of crap for me. Wait till I go to his house and interview him. And like I said, I'm not jumping to the conclusion that this man is guilty. There, there is the possibility that. That Nancy is a gun stealing underground, you know, gun smuggler right. that breaks into people's apartments and, and yeah, and she's beating kids and and I mean there there is that there is that possibility, yeah. but there's also the possibility that this saint of a father could be lying yeah. and, and and has a history of lying and and has lied about all this stuff and 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 as it comes forward, it's going to be like well, is isn't incumbent on somebody. To go, uh, if he's making the claim, the plaintiff's making the claim, right? How about uh, assessing uh, the credibility of the plaintiff? I mean, ha ha have you ever been gainfully employed? Uh, you know, I mean, do you, do you have an ulterior motive for making these claims against Nancy? Yes. I think maybe you do. Did right. she call CPS on you and the school district on yeah. you and claiming that you were abusing your right. daughter? And right. then right after that, and you moved out and made all these accusations? Right. So... I mean, somebody's got to attack him. Nobody seems to be willing to do that. None of the attorneys have looked at him uh, suspiciously. You know, they just say, "Oh, fine." You know, he's obviously right in his claims. She's wrong. I think it's. I think this has to do uh, because he has an Indian heritage. We're living in an area that uh, this is a case that could do really know that bolster. Do he has an Indian heritage? I don't know. He can claim it. Show me the papers. Yeah. You know, if you're going to uh, make a claim like you you want to uh, get a uh, a grant or something to go to, to go to a college where uh, you can get get, get uh, uh, you know a stipend or reimburse for your native. Uh, position, you know, I think you're one sixteenth or something. You can get some, or one thirty second. There's some yeah. criteria, but yeah. you have to prove that you've you, got this long line, uh, yeah, the of, history you know, of connections. Yeah, and I, maybe he does. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't know anything about does, it. That has nothing to do. It, nothing with to do with this. Deal. No, no. It, and, 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 and the thing that really just stands out is you have a guy move into a place. The woman loves his child, is caring for his child all the time by buying her things and doing her things, and then she becomes uh, um, scared, and she made and so so here's the other thing. Okay, so she made this accusation of their sleeping arrangements and stuff. All right. Well, she wrote him a text, and he replied back to her in a text that she has that says, "This is none of your our sleeping arrangements and none of your business." So. And she called CPS and she called the school. So these things were all done before these charges are made. So there is activity going on between these two people. And the activity is, I think you're molesting your daughter and we need to have some help here. I think there's something going on with this man and his daughter. Those are the accusations made. And then all of a sudden he moves out and she has been charged with gun charges right. and all these lies have been made. So, you know, why would he do that to to, to deflect away from his I'm molesting my daughter? Yes, don't well, look over here, look yeah, over there. That, right. You know, and that's that's I don't know that to be the fact, but that's where I'm going. That's what I'm asking. I'm going to go talk to his ex girlfriends, his ex wives, anybody that I can find. If I can find somebody that's associated with him, you can guarantee they're well, going to hear from me. And these attorneys are going to find out what I'm up to. The big difference is like, so you gave a statement to the attorney. No one is going to see that but that attorney. You gave a statement to me, they're all going to hear it. It's going to be right next to Nancy's thing. It's going to be right next to all the information that I find. So when I go and I talk to these other people, I can say, well, you can hear what the other people have had to say. And they can say, oh, well, you know, this is that or this is that. But the bottom line is the truth is going to come out because I am shining a big ass light on it. And I'm going to make it come out. I'm not going to let this poor woman go to jail when I truly believe she didn't do anything. Yeah, well, there's yeah, I, I I was there, and yeah. she now, I, I you know whether or not she violated his tenant rights. I don't know because I'm I, I don't know anything. Let's about just that. say yeah. she did. And Let's say okay, I give you that one. She violated his tenant rights. Right. 
find the woman and move on with your day. Yeah. You don't charge her for three, right. I've never right. seen these guns, right. gun charges, and right. try to put her away for 30 freaking years. Yeah. She's like, she's in her 70s. This is a death sentence for a person if yeah. she gets fully convicted. Yeah. And while they're going to say, oh, well, we wouldn't actually put her in jail for 30 years, the fact that you're threatening somebody with this kind of stuff with no real evidence whatsoever. And, and she's the last person that you want to threaten. You know, yeah. she's just, and there are, people would, you know, react to charges in different ways, you know, because, you know, they've got a different view of themselves or of, of what the law is all about or whatever, you know. Uh, but I, she, I don't think she, she, I know, I know that she's taking this really hard, you know, mm -hmm. because she has no recourse, yeah. you know, uh, she, but she's tried, you know, and what do you do if you're in trouble and you don't really know how to defend yourself and she doesn't, then you go get a good attorney. After three of them, she still hasn't found one. I find that just incontrable. I think she had one. I think the first one was, not I mean, from it. my understanding, he, he was in and died. Because this was the first guy, the only guy that I've heard say, uh, you didn't have your Miranda rights written? I mean, and she's like, no, we were going to court. He was going to say I didn't have my Miranda rights uh, read to me. And that was going to, and he said, this is done. I believe her. I believe that the first attorney said this is over because how could it not be? So the bottom line is, did you read her her Miranda rights? And if you did, then what I need is video evidence of that or a second police officer that witnessed you right. reading the Miranda rights. Right. So, you know, I'm not going to call two officers a liar. I, I, I don't even want to call one officer a liar, but I am, I am interested in Officer Ulrich. Um, so my understanding with him is his parents live right down the road and that he said he saw your truck attached to her trailer loaded with carpets going to the dump on the day of this, this, uh, this thing. And she says, you were never parked in the driveway. You were never connected to her trailer and you never took carpets to the dump. Uh, the guy, the, they can be talking about me having my truck in her driveway, but not on that occasion. I mean, I'm, I'm down there, you know, you used to go down there quite a bit and help with things and, you know, different kinds of jobs and stuff, right? And so my my truck has been, I don't remember ever using my truck to pull anything to the dump. I think we used hers. I don't think mine was involved, but it could have been. I, I you know, two years ago, I don't remember exactly how we did it. You know, it's just, it, that was, it wasn't relevant to me who's, who was driving yeah. and, or what truck was being used. Well, my understanding is, is they went to the dump and they pulled up the surveillance stuff and they saw a picture of you and her going into the dump in her car. Yeah. Show me the one where you're going into the dump in your car with that trailer and those carpets on the back. But, I want to see that thing. But, and, and but, the, but the point is, who, what relevance is it that I'm involved? Or, let's say it was my truck. What does that got to do with the charges? Yeah. So you took some carpets. Of what carpets? And 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 and, 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 and the, But here's and, the crazy but, thing. Here's the point is, where, is he charging the carpets were involved in the, in the in the in the stealing of his his gear? Now, he's not talking about carpets, is he? The plaintiff is not talking about claiming that that a part of this whole dump thing had to do with carpets. Well, I I don't know that I've I've heard I, that's why I'm going to go through the well, paperwork. Where, where did the carpets come from? Yeah, where Nancy did the, has never mentioned carpets. Nobody's mentioned carpets except for this police officer, which is really interesting. Yeah. Why did Officer Ulrich insert himself into this case? He is no longer a police officer doing a police officer's job. He is an eyewitness to a crime that is testified in that crime. Therefore, he is open for me to contact him. And if he tries to you know, give like, me that, you know, this is an ongoing case. Is that, is that when we first, when I first met Nancy four years ago, she had uh, all, and she still has an awful lot of gear from her previous houses and homes. Right? And uh, she had a carpet that was really a very nice carpet rolled up in her garage. And she's and it's you're getting it's getting in the way, you know. I didn't even know what it was. I mean, it's just a rolled up carpet, but I couldn't see the insides, you know. And she said, do you, "Would you want do you want a carpet?" And I said, "Yeah, I could use one in my basement." And she says, "Well, you can have that one." And she said, "I'm just keep tripping over it, and there's no place for me to use it in this house, okay?" So I, we did load it. I uh, can't remember what rig I had at that time, but it would not have fit. I had SUVs, but it's you know it's it's twenty by fifteen or something, you know. So it would have probably gone into onto her trailer, and we would have trailered it down here. That's the only thing I can think of that has anything to do with me with the carpet. And this would have been a completely different time. It's, yeah, totally different. Totally time. different time. So, so, so there is, and that's what I said. 
Is there a possibility the officer came by on a different date yeah. and saw this and thought maybe it was related, but it, you know, yeah. and, and the We're thing is years different. years different. Yeah. And yeah. the bottom line is the carpet's in your basement. Yeah. So this man, if you, you, you're saying I did load a carpet at a different time, years before yeah. into my car, this officer may have seen it. It's in my basement right now. Please, Joshua, describe that carpet to me. Just yeah. tell me what it looks like. Yeah. Just give me a description of what that yeah. carpet looks like, and we can be in the same playing field. Because if you can't describe your own carpet, I don't believe it was yours. Not to mention, where did it come from in the past? You should be able to show me pictures. I should be able to see something with some kind of evidence of these things. He, 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 they actually said, and I, I can't believe that the, re, the research gone into this is is such so lackluster. That's why I'm going to call the investigating uh, police officer and ask him, what are you doing? Because, look, as a computer expert... I have heard that he has said that Nancy stole his daughter's computer and that his daughter had this computer. So number one, was this a personal computer or was a computer provided by the school? Because he said it was for school. So if the, and the schools do provide the kids with Chromebooks. So as a computer expert, I know that when she logs into that account, that there's a hardware ID that shows this computer logged into this account at that time. It is not very difficult for me to go into the school's uh, Google system and say, when is the last time this computer hardware ID logged into this account? And if I can see that she was logging in, logging in, logging in, and then all of a sudden uh, on the date they say Nancy stole that computer, it never logged in again. Well, that's very suspicious. But I also think it would be very suspicious if it was still being logged into after that date, because who's logging into her school account after that date with that hardware ID? She still has the computer. Or it was never logged in. There's never been a computer logged in. That means there was never a computer in the first place to right. do her school or work with. So it's really easy to find out. But, but to accuse <clears throat> Nancy of doing anything with somebody else's computer is just ludicrous. And I know. Uh, she wanted you to fix the, or go into her hard drive, right? Yeah. And you couldn't find any way to... Pictures. See, now that was the other thing. It's like the first time she came to me, she had a computer problem. The computer wasn't working. I fixed that, got it working for her, done. She, I, I charged her half price. She paid me like $75, $100 to, to do that job. And then when I started talking to her about this stuff and said I would help her, she said, can you look for these pictures? I said, absolutely. I went in there. I scanned for the pictures. I couldn't find any evidence of the pictures on that computer because they never were. They were on her phone. I brought her back to the computer. She offered to pay me. I said, absolutely not. I'm not taking any money. I I don't want to seem biased. I don't want to seem like I'm taking money from you. So therefore this story is going your way because you're paying me. No way. I don't want a penny. I want you free of charge. You know, everything I do for you is free of charge. I don't want a penny for this. I want the truth. I want to save this lady down the road from going to jail because some overzealous prosecuting attorney has decided that she is some gun smuggling mastermind. I just, I never see it. I don't see it. And I think no. this whole thing's a joke. And it's going to be a joke. And your his career is going to be a joke if he keeps going down this path. Because I'm an asshole when it comes yeah, to this you know, path. They might be a, uh, some people with black suits out in your front yard. Bring them. With a helicopter. They could bring them all uh, day long. And a briefcase yep. saying, uh, hey, we've uh, got a complaint against you at the federal level. Or no, good. Uh, good. Uh, yep. And, uh, uh, yep. Here's my nephew, Secret Service, and oh, did I mention the rest of my family? Here's my my, my son that's over here that's the fire department guy, and you know, I got plenty of friends. I'm not, and, and plus, here's the thing, I'm not afraid. I, the problem that they have is I'm a Christian, and I love the Lord with all my heart, and I'm doing this because the Lord's put it on my heart to help this woman, and God help them if they send me to jail, because I will convert so many of them over. It's not even funny. We're, we're not playing this game. I, I'm not afraid of anything this world's got to throw at me, and these guys don't scare me at all. So bring it on. I know when I, I, know when I hear the truth, and I know when I hear a lie. This lady's telling me the truth. So we're going to go down this path and find out where it leads. And I'm going to help her as much as I can. And you know what? Maybe nothing helps. Maybe nothing becomes from this. But at least I'm asking the freaking questions. I don't see them asking them. When I, 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 do, I didn't want to contact her attorney yet because I want to go through a few more. I want to get his reply and anybody else I can get. I want to get your statement. I want to get the actual documents and put them down okay, there. So let, let's I want to hand this lawyer the case and say, here's your case. Go fight it. All right. So... So, do you uh, do you do you think you can get an audience with the attorney to make your case? 
Yeah, I'll call him up and tell him who I am and what I'm doing. And 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 the thing is, and, even if he doesn't take my phone call, he's going to go look at that link. He's going to go and say, "What is this? Be heard dot live gun stealing grandma? What? Click it, and he's going to see all of this evidence. He's going to hear all the testimony. He's going to hear all the evidence that I've been able to gather. I'm going to this officer Aldrich has implanted himself in the case. There were nobody else in there I can talk to because this is an ongoing investigation. Therefore, they they can't talk to me about an ongoing okay. investigation. Right. But P Officer Aldrich has inserted himself into the investigation. He is one of the complainants saying, or one of the witnesses right. that says he saw you guys loading carpets in your car and stealing the carpets. I mean, literally, he's accused you of theft. He said you were part of a ring of people that stole the carpets, and he witnessed it. And I'm like, Boy. did you just give testimony that you saw them loading the carpet on this day? You saw it on October 8th. You saw Jerry and Nancy load carpets into their car and steal them, whether they went to the dump or wherever. You're making these accusations. <laughs> I had no idea that I was uh, being accused of being a carpet stealer. Yeah. 